Okay, hey everybody. Uh, here we are in the middle of the off season, no track days going on. Uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and post up a video on how you do data analysis using the data files that come from the performance data recorder that you can get in the Chevy Corvette or the, some of the Cadillac V-series cars or the, the new Camaros. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is the video files that produces the MP4s are, are good for a lot more than just posting up to YouTube. Uh, you can actually do some real serious data analysis, figure out how you can make your lap times faster. Uh, I spent a lot of time playing with this piece of software. It's uh, what I'll jokingly refer to as expert friendly. Uh, it's kind of hard to get started with, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty good. Uh, actually does a lot and has become my primary uh, data analysis platform now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of walk you through in this video, just kind of getting it up and running. Uh, I won't walk through the actual install process. I'm assuming you can download it and uh, click through the install process. It's really straightforward. But once you've got installed on your machine, um, what we're looking for is, is something called the Cosworth Pi Toolbox. This is different than the Cosworth Toolbox for GM um, that you'll see linked to on uh, like some of Chevy's uh, web pages. Um, they've got some pretty fundamental differences. Uh, I'll say the, the GM toolbox is frankly a lot nicer looking. It's a lot prettier. It has a couple of features the Pi Toolbox, Pi toolbox doesn't as far as uh, overlaying maps on uh, like uh, virtual imagery. Um, but for real data analysis, frankly, it's, it's kind of cumbersome and Pi Toolbox is a heck of a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and just get you started at the very beginning. Uh, we'll go ahead and just double click on the icon for Pi Toolbox. Let this thing open. I'll put a link for where to download this thing uh, in the video notes. And the first thing you're going to get, assuming you have a default install, is this little option here of uh, creating a workspace. Um, this one over here that says PDR, that's something I created. You won't see that on yours. You'll probably see this blank workspace and default motorsports. We're just going to go ahead and pick blank workspace. Um, so it's already selected. I'm going to hit OK and prepare to be amazed. What you're going to see is this, which is a blank screen without much kind of queuing of what to do. So the first thing you need to do um, after you've opened up a workspace or creating a new uh, workspace, you need to create a task. So think of a task as you know something as simple as I want to compare two laps. You can actually have multiple tasks running at the same time. Um, but for the most part, I tend to just compare two laps at a time. That's a lot easier for me to deal with. Um, so I'm going to right click on this and just do add task. So that was a right click add task. I'm just going to leave it at the default name of task one. You'll see down here, uh, you can name it something else. So maybe we'll go ahead and rename it just compare laps. Now, what do you do from here? Well, you want to add some actual data to look at. So these are going to be the MP4 files that um, you're going to, you know, download an SD card in your car, and then you're going to take those and download them to your computer. So if you right click, we're going to do add outing. Um, and these are kind of how I keep them on my PC. Uh, one of the nice features you'll see about um, the Pi Toolbox is you can actually, at a glance, go through and see things like your fastest lap in a session. So if you look down here, my fast lap was a 201 there, a 201. There was my 157.5. And you can kind of scroll down and say, OK, well, which session's got a lap I'm interested in? Well, I'm going to start with my 57.5 because that's my, my fastest personal best at VIR. So I'll go ahead and add that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and I will add another outing that I'm going to compare it to. And let's see. We'll just go ahead and pick. Uh, there's a 59.3. Let's go ahead and throw that one in there. So I got two laps now, but again, not much going on that you can see here. Uh, what we really need to do is add some displays to the worksheets here. That's where the real uh, work gets done. So we're going to go ahead and just click on insert, click on display, and you're going to have a bunch of options. Probably the bulk of what you're going to be doing is with these time distance charts. Um, this is just laying data down as a graph over time or over distance of your lap. So we'll go ahead and insert one of those. And again, we've got a blank one. So now we want to start adding data to it. So some really simple things, and I'll, I'll do different, different videos on different analysis techniques, but at the very basics, you kind of scroll over here, you'll see um, these upper arrows let you scroll through different um, kind of panes of things you can add. So right here, what we have, and also there's hotkeys, so like Alt-1, Alt-2, Alt-3, cycle you through these as well. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and do is, is 
go to this one that says channel properties. Let's go ahead and click and make sure again we highlight the display we're, we're dealing with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some channels. So I wanna add accelerator. Whoop. I clicked, I had the wrong one. I got. I don't want channel properties. I got to go over to selection. That's the next page over. So this one that I was just on is actually how you go edit the properties of that channel. Um, so I get tripped up on that now and then. I expect other folks will as well. So this is how it works. So let's go ahead and again, we've clicked on our, our time distance chart. And now we're going to go over here and we're going to add things to it. So accelerator. And that is literally how hard I am on the accelerator at a given point in time on the lap. You can see both laps here. Um, I know it probably looks kind of like a mess if you're not used to looking at this stuff, but we'll add a couple more channels for starters. We'll add brake, how hard I'm pressing on the brakes. Let's go ahead and add speed. And then uh, how about we add steering angle? So again, you'll see over here in the time distance chart, it, it's kind of hard to make sense of this where they're all overlaid on top of one another. Um, so I like to go ahead and uh, tile these within the chart. So again, if you just kind of right click inside your time distance chart, bring up the properties tab. And if you go over to view, we're gonna start by saying we want this tiled instead of overlaid. So it's much easier to look at. Now you can see these things in separate sections of the chart. So here you've got, again, your, you know, here's our full throttle. You can see trailing off the brakes coming in down uh, into turn one at VIR. Here you can see the speed. And then down here we see actually steering angle um, throughout the lap. And this is all, you see it's laid out in time. Now, I actually prefer to look at these in distance um, because if you think about it, if you've got a faster lap time, um, trying to align them on time doesn't really work because as you get faster through the lap, you'll actually be farther and farther offset. So like look down here, you can see you've got um, basically things no longer line up. So we'll go ahead and set this by distance. So again, kind of click in your chart, right click again, do properties. And again, go to view and you see you have an option to set it by distance. Now here's the first real gotcha about uh, Pi toolbox that really isn't well documented. It all goes away. And that's because the distance channel by default isn't defined anywhere in the data that comes from the PDR. So effectively, since it doesn't know how to define distance, it doesn't know how to draw the chart. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is go ahead and define distance. And, and once you do this once, you can save your worksheet. You don't have to do this every time. Um, but we actually wanna do this with a math channel. So what we're gonna do is go uh, over to tools, pi math, edit. And we're gonna create our first math channel. We're actually gonna create two of these today, um, two that are really uh, very useful uh, for doing even basic data analysis. So the first one here, we're gonna go ahead and call it uh, distance toolbox. And what we're going to do is we're gonna actually derived distance based on speed. We got a good speed channel that's gonna come with the PDR data. It's taken directly from the GPS data. Um, so we'll go ahead and just uh, infer that. So we'll go ahead and do an open paren. Um, and I'll point you guys as well, there's a, there's a thread on uh, Cosworth's um, support forum that actually covers this and actually has where you can download the match channels and import them, but they're pretty easy to just go ahead and create. So we'll do integral. And again, open paren and then bracket. Now, one of the things that's cool is you can see it autocomplete. So the system knows the channels you have available. In this case, we're gonna do speed, comma, ignore. And then we'll go ahead and we will close the parens. And then it's important to get your units right. If you don't get your units right, this isn't gonna work. So we're gonna go ahead and in this case, we're gonna do it in meters per second. And we're gonna go ahead and change the quantity of this to length and meters. So you go ahead and hit apply. And now you've got distance toolbox created, but you'll see nothing's actually changed with my chart yet because the system doesn't know that that's the channel I actually wanna use to define distance. You gotta go to a different place for that. So if you go up to tools, options, channels, there's a lot of well-defined channels. 
are kind of commonly used channels that are part of uh, Pi Toolbox. And so they allow you to basically map them to something. So here we're going to say distance. We're going to map to the actual channel of distance toolbox. As soon as I apply that, boom, there's our data. OK, now the other thing we're likely going to need to change is uh, usually the lateral acceleration channel is also uh, mapped to the wrong thing by default. I have no idea why, given this is a perfectly valid one. But let's go down and pick lateral acceleration. And the real channel needs to actually be lateral acceleration. Go ahead and hit apply and hit OK. And again, you can see here everything's much better aligned than it was before. My braking zones look roughly consistent. You can see the speed traces are fairly well lined up as far as where your minimum speeds and your maximum speeds are. And so the next thing is let's go ahead and create a map. Now, um, I've found that the, you'll, well, you'll see in a second here, there's two options. If you right click on any outing, you go down here to create map, you can do a GPS map or a standard map. Um, I actually like the standard maps. The GPS maps are a little more accurate, uh, but the problem is when you're going to do segment times and use their segment reports, for some reason the GPS maps, segments will show up with just no time data sometimes. So uh, I don't have that problem with standard maps. So we're gonna go ahead and pick a standard map. And if you give it a second here, we want track type of standard. That basically means it's a closed loop and we'll give it a name. This is VIR full. And again, if you look at it, if you're familiar with DIR, that's a fairly decent representation. Front straight, turn one. Right here you go, the climbing S's, oak trees, back straight. Um, so we'll go ahead and leave everything else, the default type standard, go ahead and hit OK. And now we have a track map that's defined. Um, now, what do I do with that? Well, first of all, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and just insert an actual map display. So you see here automatically within a given worksheet, it'll it'll tile the windows. Um, you know, you pretty readily work with four um, displays within a single worksheet here. Uh, you can have multiple worksheets. I think you can have two with the light version that we're running here. This is Pi Toolbox Lite. If you pay for the full version, I think you can get as many as eight uh, different worksheets. Um, there's also, we'll get too far into this right now, but with the paid version, you can do some cool things like actually have video displays. So I can show um, the actual track videos from multiple sessions on the screen at the same time along with the data. But here you'll see it's it's gone ahead and it's tried to determine the corners based on lateral Gs and it's given them corner numbers. And you could go in and do things like, if you right click on it and edit map, uh, you can insert basically uh, segment beacons inside. So, you know, let's say I wanted to go ahead and uh, insert a beacon right there. And oops, it actually thinks I'm trying to edit my beacon. Let's try it there. Uh, insert split beacon. And then maybe I'll do another one as I start through the S's. And then maybe I want another split beacon, um, perhaps here after I come off of Oak Tree. We're just kind of making this up as we go. And go ahead and edit, done. And what this now allows me to do is go ahead and do a split display. So I can go ahead and do insert, display, and they actually call this um, split report. Okay, now the thing is, you see there's no data on the split report, and that's because by default, um, they actually don't know what channel you want to throw into the split report. The obvious one is elapsed time, or lap time, because that's what most people are interested in. So let's go ahead and make sure we've selected our window. Um, and again, I can scroll through this thing, or I can just go ahead and hit Alt-2, which brings up the selection. And then what I want to do is add the elapsed time channel to that um, to that report, the split report. So I just double click. Now it's added. And then boom, now you actually see um, there's my segment times with the segments that I've defined with my soft splits. Um, so you get, you know, per lap stuff, you get the fastest rolling lap, you get a theoretical fast lap. Um, it's a little bit skewed in this case, uh, I think probably from the out lap. So you can actually go in and do things like Go into properties, it's a right click properties. Let's go ahead and take the out lap and in lap out. So 
So now we've just got true lab data. And the other thing you need to um, kind of recognize with Pi Toolbox is you need to attach the report to a given outing. So in this case, you see a little red circle. If I go over here to where I see my outings again, it's that lap two, that red lap two. Um, if I want to go ahead and instead attach it to the other outing, I can right click and click on left click connect. And now it's showing the laps from that other outing. So again, here you see a, a different report. It's got probably some slightly more interesting data in it. And I can create multiples of these so I could have one attached to each outing and actually look at uh, both of them. So now that I've got that defined, I'm going to show you one more thing and then we'll, we'll go ahead and call it an evening for this video. Uh, there's one channel that frankly ought to be there by default again and isn't, um, and that's really comparing lap times uh, based on distance in the lap. So I'm going to go ahead and just expand this so it's full screen again. You know, I want to look for the obvious places where I can pick up lap time. So I needed to find a math channel to do that. Uh, so again, we're going to go back into tools, back into PyMath, back into edit. And we'll go ahead and click the plus button. And we're going to create one we call compare time. And we're just going to have it be the function that's built in compare dist. And then we're going to compare on distance the elapsed lap time. So we go ahead and let's go ahead and make sure our units are right. Time is second. Um, we'll go ahead and just hit apply on that. And let's see, the compare time should also be time of seconds. Let's go ahead and change that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and add that to our display. Um, again, Alt 2 just gives me the selection. And I will go find compare time. Do you see how I did this compare time dot time? Uh, you'll see that if you create a channel and then you change the units on it. Um, again, it's a funny thing they'll do because you can call two channels the same thing but have different units. So we'll go ahead and just double click on that. And now what you can see right here in the middle is this is my two laps and where the times start deviating. So you can see, you know, this section right here, um, which roughly maps to breaking into uh, turn one here, or coming through turn, breaking before I go to turn one, uh, I made up a good bit of time. I mean, right there, you can see that I was 0.4 seconds faster in my 157 lap than in my 159 lap. It was pretty steady through here, but then again, I started slowly picking up time. So you can really drill into these sections to figure out, well, what are you doing differently? Maybe I was on the gas sooner. Maybe I just carried more speed through. You can see a lot of that down here. We'll we'll spend an entire video going through and doing the lap analysis, but you really need that compare time channel uh, to make this uh, something that's really useful to, to find those um, wins in your lap time and improve your overall lap time. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there for the evening. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, if you've got specific things you're asking for, you'd like to know, uh, go ahead and just post them in the comments. And uh, otherwise, I'll just keep adding in new useful things that I'm finding with Pi Toolbox. Thanks.